Hello from uh, the Netherlands uh, here. I'm very excited to uh, be here giving a presentation is something that's a little out of my comfort zone, but I guess that is a consequence of uh, a promise that I made two years ago. Uh, two years ago, uh, I was on my honeymoon in Egypt and we went there for snorkeling and we saw so many beautiful fishes and the corals and we swam with uh, turtles and dolphins uh, and every night we returned to the hotel and we had dinner there but there was also a lot of seafood being served and i realized that um, i didn't do much for fishes yet i was already involved in animal activism but uh, I didn't speak up for fishes. So um, the idea was to return to Egypt this year with a camera and to make footage of the life underwater there. Uh, but of course, because of the COVID-19 restrictions, our holiday got cancelled. Uh, so we decided we uh, would explore the Dutch waters instead and tell about fishes there. So this is a picture of two carp. Uh, it's made, the picture is in a, made in a lake uh, near our home. Uh, and the idea was born to uh, educate people about fishes and underwater life. And now we are uh, developing a website and we want to make more videos and uh, share this with the public. And then uh, on Facebook, I came across this care conference and um, I saw it as an opportunity to reach out to other people that care for animals to speak up for fishes too. So why should you advocate for fishes? Well, to me, it's quite obvious there are the planet's most widely abused animals, yet their suffering gets the least attention. Trillions of fishes are being mistreated and killed for the food industry, uh, in the pet trade, in aquariums, uh, for recreational fishing, and also in laboratories. The problem for fish is that people don't really relate to them. Um, we rarely see them in the in, in their natural habitats, and um, well, they don't have much expression, and you can't cuddle them, and they don't scream while they're in pain. Uh, so I think it's very important uh, to teach people uh, something about uh, fish, uh, because I even know vegans that really care for animals. Uh, are sometimes scared to get in the water or are maybe even scared of fish. So I think education is key to, uh, for people to make a connection. So let's talk a bit about uh, fish. Um, a fish is a vertebrate that lives in the water using gills. Uh, and vertebrate means that uh, the animals have a skeleton and a spine. Uh, the most fishes have a skeleton made of bones, uh, but sharks and rays have a skeleton from a softer rubbery material called cartilage. And um, we, and there are 33,600 of species of uh, fishes. And that means that um, there are about as much species of fishes than there are of species of other vertebrates together. Yet we speak of fish like it's one kind of species. We rarely talk about mammals, of course, sometimes in general, but more often we talk about lions or dogs or cows. Um, we don't, because there are also different animals and in fishes, it's not much different. 
Now the plural of fish in English is usually fish. But um, in biology, the word fishes is used to refer to the, all the different species. And um, many activists that speak up for fishes have decided to use the word fishes too, because there are so many of them. So as you can see over here, I just put some example of different uh, fishes together and they all look different and they all have very different lives. For example, this deep, deep sea anglerfish, it lives at depths at 2000 meters below the surface. It never sees daylight. And then uh, below you have the parrotfish that lives on the coral. So it lives very much near the surface. To give you an example of uh, modifications and adjustments fishes can have to help them survive. I'll tell you something about the Atlantic bluefin tuna. The Atlantic bluefin tuna is the largest species uh, of tuna uh, that there is. Um, it can live up to 40 years. Uh, tunas may migrate across all oceans and they can dive as deep as 1,000 meters. They are built for speed and traveling. Uh, they have torpedo shaped like bodies and retractable fins. Um, and um, uh, they also have an other special feature. They have a specialized blood vessel structure called a countercurrent exchanger. And this allows them to keep their body temperature just a couple of degrees uh, higher than the surrounding waters. This gives them a great advantage uh, while uh, hunting in cold waters. And they hunt by sight, so they also have uh, very good eyes. They have the best eyes of any bony fish. But unfortunately, the Atlantic bluefin tuna is uh, an endangered, endangered species. And that brings me to all the negative consequences of fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, there are a lot and um, I just give a quick summary uh, in this presentation because otherwise it would take far too long. But of course there's far more to tell about it. The first problem is the depletion of our ocean. Year after year we uh, push the boundaries of what our oceans can, can have. Um, and nowadays, 90% of the marine stocks are uh, fully exploited, overexploited, or depleted. And of course, when um, fisher boats go out fishing, they catch far more than the target species. Uh, they also catch other species of fish, but they can also catch dolphins or turtles and even seabirds. Uh, this non-target species is called bycatch. Um, when fishing, there's also sometimes uh, destruction of habitat. When you think of bottom trawlers that uh, roll their nets over the ocean floor, it leaves a devastation there. But you can also think of fish farms that are built in mangroves uh, and destroy the habitat over there. Acidification is another problem. 30% uh, of our carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, but it can only be done because they have a good e ecosystem and these ecosystems now are very disrupted. So uh, it's harder to absorb this CO2 while on the other hand, we produce more and more of it. So this means there's more CO2 dissolving in the ocean, and it means that the ocean gets more acid. And this is a very big threat to uh, any life that has uh, calcium structures uh, in their skeletons. For example, for corals or seashells or uh, lobsters. Also, not uh, all the nets uh, 
a get on the boats again. Uh, often fisher boats lose their nets. And that means they're just drifting, relying on the ocean floor. And still many uh, animals can get entangled in the nets, like turtles or uh, sharks. And then, of course, uh, fisheries and agriculture cause a huge amount of animal suffering. Uh, fishes suffer from the moment a net is hunting for them. Uh, when they pulled out of the water, when they suffocate on the boats, uh, but sometimes they're still alive and it means that in most of the cases they are cut open alive. But also in aquaculture, uh, fish live in crowded pens and there are several treatments that are hurtful for them. Uh, aquaculture is also a good reason for pollution from the waters because uh, so many fishes live there in open pens. Uh, the waste of these fishes and the camels that are used to treat the, the fishes from, uh, de for, from parasites and that kind of thing, uh, it pollutes the surrounding water. And then there is also a human problem. Uh, there are many people trapped on boats. We don't know exactly how many, but uh, it, it's about thousands and maybe even millions of people that get stuck on fisher boats. These um, people get there in search for a job and they think they'll be out for some months and make some money for their families. But instead they are, they are not going back or they're out there for years. Uh, they are badly abused and they're exposed to uh, torture and uh, sometimes even murder. So if you want to know about all of these problems, you can find very much information on the internet. Uh, these are some things where you can start. Seaspire sees a 15 minute overview of the problems there are. And Lisa Kammerer uh, did a talk uh, with facts for fish eaters how you can convince them not to eat fish anymore. World's most toxic fish uh, will explain how toxins get into fish. And uh, Salt to the Sea is about uh, the human slavery on fishing boats. And then there's artificial that um, explains what can happen when you introduce a, a farmed salmon into the wild. This was an experiment and it's almost lead to the extinction of the wild salmon population there. But don't only read all the negative things. Uh, it's fun to learn about fishes too. And I think it's uh, also good to do. Uh, don't overload yourself with all the bad news because every day there will be more. Um, but a good way to start to learn about fishes is the book What a Fish Knows from Jonathan Bocombe. And he also did a TED uh, talk about this and many things that he tells in the book um, are um, used in campaigns for fishes. But also you can also watch documentaries. We in the Netherlands have a channel Love Nature that broadcast uh, these uh, uh, documentaries uh, regularly or you can search uh, for local organizations that teach about uh, nature and sometimes they have uh, specialized groups that know uh, about fishes too. So what can you do to speak up for fishes? Well if you already doing something for animals you can simply add uh, include fishes in your activism. Um, this is a list of things that are done in the Netherlands. Uh, we have outreach on the streets. Uh, usually they use laptops with footage of animal ag agriculture. Uh, of course, you can just add a footage of uh, fish farms and fisheries and talk about this too.
and sometimes they do disruptions here in supermarkets or in restaurants of course this can be done in uh, fish restaurants too or in fish markets i've been to a couple of animal rights marshes and then you see a lot of signs of uh, for cows for pigs and chickens and i would like to see more signs for fishes as well uh, so uh, that people also think uh, of them. Um, we also have a march uh, on the day against animal testing. And also that could be a good occasion to uh, point out that fishes are also used in animal testing, especially zebra fishes. A fish shave is something we don't have yet in the Netherlands. I know uh, they talk about it to organize one. Um, I've been to a lot of uh, vigils. Uh, usually these are actions that held in front of slaughterhouses and the activists make footage of the animals going in. But sometimes it's also more like a demonstration uh, and then you hold signs in front of the slaughterhouse and you can do outreach uh, for uh, to people that pass by. But of course, if street activism is not your thing, there are also other things you could do. Uh, you can organize uh, presentations or screenings. Um, um, an organization in the Netherlands that is does is uh, Seafirst and um, there were screenings with uh, See the Truth and a documentary that's made in the Netherlands too. But there are also existing campaigns for fishes. Uh, they do very important work and you could see what you can do for them. Usually these campaigns are launched by uh, welfare organizations. Um, if you're an animal rights activist and you're vegan, this might be a problem for you because um, they usually don't carry out the vegan point of view. Um, but if you can't find a campaign uh, that suits you, then maybe it's time to talk to an organization that you like and see what you can do together. Uh, and also you can share plant-based alternatives for seafood. Um, for example, you can share your favorite recipe uh, for no tuna salad, or you can make vegan sushi and share this. And of course, there's online activism. Um, well, if you post about other animals, you can post about fishes uh, too. Um, we use a lot of uh, social media to um, publish the videos uh, we, we make. If you uh, have the opportunity to make footage yourself and share, that, that is also a wonderful thing to do. I get a lot of information from Facebook by following, following these three pages, uh, Fish Feel and Oceana and Citizens of the Blue Planet. They share great articles and information about fishes. Then uh, when advocating for fishes, there are some things I'd like you to think about. Uh, I will tell more about each one of them in the next slides. So at first consider not to use the word overfishing. I think the term overfishing implies that there is a good way of fishing. And to me, I think that the only sustainable fisheries there are, are fisheries of uh, local communities in uh, remote areas that fish to feed their family. And uh, people they, who don't have much other food resources. But a lot of commerce fish Commercial fishing isn't like that at all. And we do make sustainability goals, but I, in here I have an example of what 
uh, a goal like that can look like. This is a graphic of the herring in our North Sea. And in 1950, we used to have uh, 5.6 billion of kilograms in our North Sea. Yet our sustainability goal lies at a 1.5 billion of kilograms. Well, to me, this sounds like you have a debt on your bank account and you uh, of 80,000 euros and you think, well, as long as I don't get to the 100,000, uh, then I'm doing fine. But we all share this same bank account. Uh, we all share this one ocean. And I don't think it matters really who took too much of it. We already all together took too much. And we all will pay the price in the end. But like I said, don't uh, only share all the negativity, also share fun facts about fishes uh, so that people learn to relate to, to them. Uh, a lot of times people don't even know what the fish looked like when they were alive. Uh, so I think it's very good to, to show this. And uh, share alternatives for uh, plant-based alternatives for seafood. Uh, I used to love eating fish. I feel very sorry I uh, eat them before, but um, I'm very happy that uh, there are alternatives. And um, I like those too. You can still have good uh, food when you leave fishes out of your plate. Well, this last one is a bit of a tough one. Uh, of course, fishing is cruel. Um, fishing for fun is a very unnecessary cruelty towards fishes. But like you have people that really care for animals. Um, you have also anglers that really care about, uh, about fishes. And in the Netherlands, we have this very big organization for anglers called Sportvisserij Nederland. Uh, you would translate this as Sport Fishing the Netherlands. And this organization is involved in uh, almost every policy, every research, every project that there is about fishes. Uh, for example, they um, participate in uh, projects to improve fish migration uh, or they evacuate fishes when the water levels get too low. Uh, and they are also a great uh, resource of uh, information. So they also do a lot for fishes, of course, with a very bad motivation. And I will never ask you to support fishing, not at all. But uh, you might consider this when you want to uh, reach out to people. Um, I think it's good to start with some questions uh, for people that are willing to talk and ask them what fishes they live and if they have seen changes. I think you can also learn from them. Uh, and then of course try to make your point why you think it's, it's a bad thing to do. But um, Maybe if you start conversation with questions, then there might be more room for you to tell your story. And at last, I wanted to, uh, I would like to see organizations working together. And I think throughout the year, there are some uh, great days uh, to do so. The most important day to use is I think the World Day for the End of Fishing. It's held in March. Um, uh, this uh, day is launched in 2017 in Switzerland uh, by um, uh, Pour Legalité Anima, but nowadays it's um, used by associations around the world uh, that raise awareness for aquatic life. 
the organization is very helpful to uh, share uh, promotion material with you. They will even share their InDesign files so you can adjust it, translate it, or add your name to this. Um, so I think that's a very good day to speak up for fishes. But there are also other opportunities like World Fish Migration Day. Uh, that's about to raise awareness uh, for the obstacles fishes face when migrating through our rivers. And there's World Ocean Day. The main goal of World Oceans Day is to not only to raise awareness, but to put pressure on the government to uh, reach the goal that they call 30 by 30, which means uh, uh, that they want 30% of the oceans protected at 2030. And then there's Shark Awareness Day. I know there are all also shark weeks and these are uh, perfect opportunities to tell more about sharks, that they're, they are not monsters hunting after humans. Um, it's actually the other way around. Uh, and these are beautiful creatures. Um, people should be less scared of them. And this year I came also across Respect for Fish Day. It is launched by In Defense of Animals. And they also want to raise awareness about the plight of fish. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening. And uh, after this, there is room for questions. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can uh, send me an email or find me on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have some questions. Um, the first one is from Tomas. Uh, you discussed multiple uh, cross-cause area issues, such as human slavery. Do you think there is opportunity for an alliance uh, between animal and non-animal groups? Um, well, I think that should be possible. Uh, I think um, it, it's important to work together with many, as many organizations as possible. So if you have chances to work together, uh, I would definitely use those chances. I think so. Okay, uh, Jennifer asks, how can we make people relate to fish? Well, um, I spoke with a scientist uh, here at the university in the Netherlands. He does research uh, also uh, ab about pain uh, in fishes and things like that. And I asked him the same question and he talked about an experiment of um, that they had two elevators and they in one elevator, people who saw, will saw fishes, beautiful fishes swimming in an aquarium. And the other one was just an elevator. And afterwards, when they came out of it, they had to um, fill out a form with questions if they, there should be done something for fishes. And he said you could split these papers by who was in which elevator. So, um, if people uh, know what a fish looks like and they see how beautiful they are, uh, that can make the connection. Uh, maybe there are other ways too. Uh, of course, you can look for yourself under the water while snorkeling. <laughs> uh, but, uh, for example, in the Netherlands, that's that's quite hard because the water is often uh, too cold or uh, the visibility is bad and things like that. Yeah. Uh, another question. How should we weight the need of people, for example, small community fisheries or basic subsistence against the suffering of the animal? 
Well, yeah, I think that, of course, um, fishes and local fisheries will suffer too, but uh, there is not much done for fishes yet. And I think we should uh, first try to address the biggest problem and uh, speak to people that actually do have choices to stop this suffering. I think everyone who is able to do groceries in their local supermarket and can make other choices, I think that's uh, the first uh, people we want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another question from me. Uh, do you often use an argument about environmental problem in your fish campaign on your social media or in public relationships? Uh, yes, uh, I, I do this too because it's very much related, of course. And uh, to be honest, um, I became vegan. Uh, uh, I saw that as a first step towards uh, more respect to um, the environment and animals. Um, for from the original, I am more with nature and environment counseling, but uh, because of my vegan activism, I uh, got involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. <laughs> Okay, another question is from Stian. Are there opportunities for policy change in the Netherlands? How important are fisheries for the Dutch economy? And do they receive government subsidies? Uh, yes, they do get uh, subsidized. And uh, I'm not sure there uh, will be much changes uh, of that soon because uh, in the Netherlands we always think we are the most sustainable and the best doing country in the world or something like that mm -hmm. uh, so they do big investments improving on fish welfare uh, but they get uh, subsidized for that too uh, so um, from a legislation perspective, uh, I think the changes are very slow. Mm. But we, on the other hand, we do have in the Netherlands a party for the animals. And uh, they are uh, uh, putting, uh, they are speaking up for fishes uh, in there too. So. I think that's uh, our only chance at the moment. I understand. Okay, and another one. Uh, do you have fish farms in the Netherlands? Yes, we have. Yes. Uh, do you know how many? I Maybe. don't know how many. Uh, I know uh, someone else is doing research uh, about this uh, because I recently joined uh, a campaign for fishes within a vegan organization in the Netherlands. Um, I don't know exactly how many. I know we have uh, fish farms for eels, uh, mm -hmm. but we cannot farm them fully in the Netherlands. We take uh, the juveniles out of the sea and then bring them here to let them grow here in the Netherlands. Uh, and there are uh, farms for catfish and uh, trout, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are, are quite some. And are there uh, commercial ornamental fish breeders in the Netherlands also? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure, I, I, I guess. Um, a lot of fish are... Uh, transported from China of Israel um, but I think that we also uh, breed fishes here for aquariums but I don't know much about that. Yeah. Okay there's the last one. Uh, there's any question? 
left. Do you have any questions, participants? If you have, put it in your in our Slido. And uh, so uh, we can see uh, the videos which you uh, talk about about fishes uh, from you and from your organized organizations on your Facebook or yes well, we will publish them on YouTube uh, um, especially my husband is uh, making the videos um, we are busy to collect more footage and then we try to make uh more videos of uh species separately so that we also are able to tell something about this mostly it's done in dutch but um because now i'm reaching out quite to a lot of people that also speak english uh, i might add uh, some information in english as well yeah it was perfect thank you yeah it was very interesting and also sad <laughs> for me but thank you for your presentation and question and answers you open yes thank you for uh, all uh, the good organization and uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, to speak to you all <laughs> thank you very much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> so uh uh, good work, good work. <laughs>